Antarctica. It was once a green land full of dinosaurs. But now it's a frozen continent bigger than that of the US that doesn't belong to anyone. It isn't hard to find. Wherever you go, just go south until you get to the big icy thing at the south pole of our planet. It lies within the Antarctic Circle, and it's the largest single mass of ice on Earth. The continent is bigger than the US and even bigger than all of Europe. And still, Antarctica was officially discovered recently. Scientists hadn't known of its existence until 1820. After the discovery, it took another two decades to confirm it was a whole new continent and a few more decades after that to decide on a name. In Antarctica, anti means the opposite. So Antarctica literally means the opposite of the Arctic. Now even before scientists discovered the land, ancient Greeks already theorized that there must be a southern continent to balance out the Arctic in the north. Also, some scientists who studied Polynesian artwork and oral history believe that Polynesians found the continent over a millennia before the Europeans did. Anyways, today we all know of this icy land at the South Pole. Because of its location, there are just two seasons there, summer and winter, and both last six months. In summer, it's a bit warmer, and the continent exists in pure daylight. And in winter, it's dark all day long. 98% of Antarctica is ice. This continent alone stores 60% of the planet's fresh water. And yet, despite all those water reserves, Antarctica is the biggest desert in the world. By definition, a desert is an area with sparse vegetation and little snow or rain. Notice that plenty of sand isn't a necessary condition here, even though the continent does have some sand and even sand dunes. It also gets a lot of wind. Antarctica is the windiest continent on Earth, and wind speeds can reach 200 miles per hour. That's even faster than hurricane winds. The little snow the land gets never melts. It just builds up over time, for centuries and millennia. So there's a thick, thick ice layer there. This makes Antarctica full of hidden secrets. There's a whole new world underneath its ice. For example, there are a lot of mountains on the continent that are like 9,000 feet tall. It's taller than three Burj Khalifas stacked on top of each other, if we must. And that's currently the tallest skyscraper in the world. But we don't see all those mountains because they're all hidden under the ice sheet that is almost 16,000 feet thick. There's also a lake down there, beneath over 11,000 feet of snow. The lake is called Lake Vashtok, named after Vashtok Research Station, under which it's located. Originally, it was just a hypothesis. Over a century ago, a scientist suggested that the huge pressure created by tons of ice could decrease the melting point of ice in the lowest layers of the ice sheet, creating liquid water, which could form a lake. He didn't prove his ideas in his lifetime, but others continued his work and confirmed that this theory was true. There's also a canyon in Antarctica, hidden underneath huge masses of snow too. It's deeper than the Grand Canyon we have in Arizona. There is a mountain range that divides the continent into two parts, East Antarctica and West Antarctica. The western part of the continent is experiencing higher temperatures and is starting to melt. If West Antarctica melts and releases its stored water, it will raise the average global sea level by about 16 feet. That will be enough for some cities all over the world to completely disappear. Perhaps the first to turn into a water world will be Thailand's capital, Bangkok which is just 5 feet above sea level. Then it will be Amsterdam in the Netherlands, followed by Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, Cardiff in the UK, and New Orleans in the US. People do a lot of work in Antarctica now, residing there for many months at a time to study this mystery of a continent. Over the years, even a few children were born there. But it's not a country, and the land doesn't belong to anyone. It's governed by the Antarctic Treaty System an agreement of peaceful research and collaboration that suspends all territorial claims. It was first signed by 12 nations, and now there are 59 supporters, half of whom have decision-making powers. The continent is occupied all year round by researchers from all over the world. There are about 5,000 people living there in summer and about 1,000 in winter. Yet no one is a permanent resident there. People come and go, and the scientists take turns spending time there. The average yearly temperature there is negative 30 degrees. Ooh. But there was a time when Antarctica was about as warm as Melbourne, Australia is today. 
It was about 40 to 50 million years ago. Yeah, I wasn't around then. But the continent had green forests and dinosaurs roaming its land, chilling in the sun in a 63 degree Fahrenheit environment. That was before penguins. In our age, it's so cold that you won't even find any trees or bushes in Antarctica. Just the snow. The only plants that can thrive in such extreme temperatures are lichens, moss, and algae. People can't stand such freezing conditions for lengthy periods of time either. So the continent has never had any indigenous population. Well, that is, if we don't count penguins, seals, whales, and a few other types of birds that live there now. Antarctica's fauna is the scariest and least diverse on the planet because only a few organisms can withstand its harsh conditions and because non-natives aren't allowed to be brought there. So if you decide to travel to Antarctica with your cat, well, you can't. Hey, I don't make the rules. But those few species that live on the South Pole totally own the place. There are no more than 5,000 people there and around 20 million penguins. They are a kind of settlers, though. Penguins' first ancestors lived in Australia and New Zealand. There are still a few penguin species there, including the smallest penguin on Earth that is just one foot tall. Still, most of the penguins migrated to Antarctica at some point, possibly because they were attracted by the greater food supply there. It's not the cold that made them like the land. It turns out, most penguins leave the continent when the summer ends. The only ones that stay there are male emperor penguins. And they do it to warm and protect eggs left by their mates. But where do all the other penguins go? At first, it was a big mystery even to scientists. But then they attached some tiny location devices to the legs of a few of these animals and figured it out. Penguins go to live in the southern oceans while it's too cold in Antarctica. None of them go ashore for half a year until they get back to the continent. When they come back, it's when those eggs, left for male penguins to nurture, start hatching. And so, penguin families can be together when it happens. Penguins eat different fish, and the ocean is full of those despite its cold temperature. In some areas, water can reach below freezing temperatures because it's salty. But fish don't freeze there because they have antifreeze proteins in their bodies. Then there are also about a million seals in Antarctica. They like fish too and they can hold their breath underwater for two hours. They see way better underwater than in the bright light of the day, and they also use their whiskers to locate food. Their breathing holes in the ice can freeze while seals are away, and they must use their teeth to make a new one. Seals can even sleep underwater, and then resurface occasionally to get some air without waking up. I can appreciate that. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.